Oh, here we are. We're at the bye week. Oh, coaches and players say, oh, I prefer early bye week, later bye week. The schedule is what it is. So what are the, the benefits of an early bye week and how will you guys take advantage of that? Right now, because we're banged up, the early bye week suits us well. We can get some guys well, nursing injuries. We can watch some tape. We can self-scout what we do as far as how we can scheme things going forward, seeing what people are trying to do to us. But the biggest thing is for us to get healthy. Is that the, the thing when you, when you say self-scout? Is it let's look at us from an opponent's point of view, see what we're doing for the first few weeks? Because now everybody else has tape on you as well. So we always do look at ourselves. But now that you get a bye week, you get extra time to really look at it. During the week, you just get to see it and you have to move on. Right now, we can really look at it and break it down to the bare bones. So what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, what we can change, what we can fix, how to keep players in the best position to make plays, and how we go forward. We got to hear from Dave Canales uh, on Monday afternoon. The offensive coordinator said things he, that are going really well, things that he would like to work on. How can a, a new young assistant coach uh, benefit from this week as well when the players come back? Maybe he has something lined up for them. Well, the self-scout really tells you what you're good at and what you're not and what you can get better at, who you're using or overusing or underutilizing that you can help out going forward for us to be a better offense going forward. And I think Dave's going to do a great job at that. Running the football seems to be uh, the, the biggest goal or, or the next step, I guess, for the offense. How well are you guys running right now? Keep trying, keep trying, and you're getting those breakthrough plays finally uh, later in games. No, you have to keep trying to run the football. It's not about having a success ratio right away. If you can get the volume up, eventually you'll start breaking those runs. The main object is are we running it enough to win games? You know, if you're winning games, you take it how you can get it and you work on the things that you have to work on. But we always want to run the football better. We want to do a lot of things better. but. It's a work in progress. I think it's getting better, and I think it's going to get better. You know, something that's different for Bucks fans this year with Baker Mayfield as the quarterback is his ability not only to, to escape and move the pocket around, but he is getting yards when the opportunity presents itself, when, when there's a chance to get something, like a couple of third down runs in the New Orleans games, on the New Orleans game. What is he bringing to this team that's just a little bit different for the veterans like Mike and Chris Godwin to see? He's playing very smart football. He's playing very tough football. I think we moved them guys around a lot more this year than they have been in the past, and they're excited about that part. I think Baker knows how to get them the football. They have chemistry developing by the day, and I think they're excited to see when he takes off some and makes some smart, intelligent runs to get first down, so their quarterback's all in, and he's going to go all out for them, and they, they get behind him. I remember talking to Robert Hainsey a couple of weeks ago. I, I asked, are there, are there Baker Mayfield rules for you guys on the line when you know he's extending the play and he might be 15 yards away from you? And he says, not really. It, you're playing to the whistle, but he's paying attention to where the, the defensive linemen are looking while he's engaging. It's, it, there's little nuances to a quarterback that is this mobile, right? He has great escapability. He can see what's in front of him still looking downfield. He understands when he has to run. He never wants your quarterback hit like that or taking those type of chances, but he takes calculated chances. He takes very good chances where he knows he has a chance to make something happen, and we like that. How good is this O-line performing for you through four games? It's always good, but it can get better. Obviously, we can get better in the run game. I think we're just scratching the surface. And you rotated a lot of receivers in the New Orleans game. Mike Evans had, didn't play the second half. Everybody's wondering, well, how's Mike? How's Mike? Well, regardless, all of these guys have gotten into the game. Devin Tompkins makes a, an unbelievable catch that you've probably seen out here on the practice field before. Uh, this group, uh, top to bottom, how reliable has it become coming out of camp and now through the first month of the season? I think through the first quarter, it's been great. Obviously, they can get better. The younger guys are only going to get better through midway of the season. It's really going to help us as the season develops. Uh, Palmer has done a great job. He caught a touchdown as well. You talked about Tompkins. Uh, Rakeem Jarrett, you have yet to see him yet wholeheartedly. He's going to be another good one coming up right there. So we have some guys that's going to develop and help us going forward that we really like. On defense, we haven't talked a lot about Vita Vea yet this season. Yet, three and a half sacks. He's up there in the top ten. This is a guy that looks like he's just trying to get to the starting line every week. I know he's nursing a, a nagging injury. I know the bye week will be helpful for him. But how effective and just what kind of a leader has he been 
on your defensive line. Well, you kind of take him for granted because he is so big and powerful, but he's been tenacious down there, even with a, 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 sore, a sore peck. He's been tenacious down there. He gets through the line of scrimmage. He's been our unquestioned leader on the defensive line. Uh, he sets the tone all the time up the middle as far as knocking the center back or the guard back. He gets sacks. He, he makes his presence known. He runs sideline to sideline. That's what you really like to see about him, and everybody gets excited over that. I know it, you had glimpses of Kalija playing. Does Vita get better when he's able to get on the field week in and week out, and then collectively the group feels the effect of having Kalija on the line? He's going to see a lot more single blocks once Kalija gets back. That would be a yes. <laughs> that would be a yes. <laughs> the defensive backs uh, Sunday, once again, you're going without Jamel Dean. D. Delaney's making plays. Antoine Winfield was just, I think he was involved in every single play in the Superdome. <laughs> this is a, a group that's really had resilience already this season for you. How have they done this first four weeks? They've done well for the most part. Obviously, we like to have some things back. We can get better at a lot of things, but they're getting their hands on balls. Uh, we didn't let the ball go over our head this past game, and that was a great thing. The, these guys are getting experience as we go, so if somebody goes down, the next guy stepping up. Uh, Coach Ross and Coach Rapone and Coach Johnson are doing a great job back there along with Coach Atkins, so they coach them up, and those guys are performing for them. How proud are you of Devin White right now? I know the, the, the scenario was what it was in the offseason. Come into camp. He, he puts his helmet on and gets to work. He's been very, very good in these games that we've been able to see. And he's kept his head down, kept working. How, how, how impressive is this young man right now? Devin always works, you know. Off season, the off season. We've never not been proud of Devin. We've <laughs> been proud of Devin the entire time. He works hard every day. Uh, he doesn't take any plays off. He, he's a warrior. He's playing. He's probably nicked up a little bit too, but you'll never know it by talking to him. But he played his tail off, and he's one of our unquestioned leaders, and we, we go as fast as he goes. And finally, Coach, 3-1. and one, you come back from the bye. The schedule does not let up. You got two very good opponents stacked up behind each other. Uh, how is the belief for a three and one team compared to what it could be the other way when, when you're still trying to get things worked out here? You take some time off, but everybody still believes, you know, we're three and one. We've set ourselves up to do something here. I've always said this, when you start the season, you have to win while you figure out who you are. You know, you're gonna make some mistakes, but if you can win while you do it, it, it stacks up chips for you. We just got to continue that and cut out the mistakes. And we had too many penalties last game. The guys understand that. But we're coming together as a unit. And the more we come together as a unit, the stronger we become. The guys have been believed, but now they're seeing it put on paper and the score is showing up like that.